Johannes Andreas Grib Feibiger, the 23rd of April 1867 to the 30th of January 1928, was a Danish physician and professor of anatomical pathology at the University of Copenhagen. He was the recipient of the 1926 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discovery of the spiritera carcinoma. He demonstrated that the roundworm which he called Spiritera carcinoma but correctly named Gongylonema neoplasticum could cause stomach cancer squamous cell carcinoma in rats and mice. His experimental results were later proven to be a case of mistaken conclusion. Erling Norby, who had served as the permanent secretary of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and professor and chairman of virology at the Karolinska Institute, declared Fibiger's Nobel Prize as one of the biggest blunders made by the Karolinska Institute. While working at the Institute of Pathological Anatomy of University of Copenhagen, Feibiger discovered new roundworms in 1907 from wild rats. He suspected that the roundworms were responsible for stomach cancer in those rats. In 1913, he reported that he could experimentally induce cancer in healthy rats using the roundworms. His discovery was considered the greatest contribution to experimental medicine. At the time, in 1926, he was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine along with Katsusaburo Yamagiwa, who had experimentally induced carcinoma by painting crude coal tar on the inner surface of rabbit's ears in 1915. However, they were considered undeserving, and the 1926 prize was not given. In the next year Feibiger alone was retrospectively chosen for the 1926 Nobel Prize. After his death, independent researches proved that G. neoplasticum cannot cause cancer. Tumors and cancer produced by Feibiger were due to vitamin A deficiency. Historical reassessment of Feibiger's data revealed that he had mistaken non-cancerous tumors for cancerous tumors. His research method on diphtheria is regarded as the origin of an important research methodology in medicine known as controlled clinical trial. Topic. Biography Feibiger was born in Silkborg, Midtjylland, Denmark. He was the second son of Christian Ludwig Wilhelm Feibiger and Elfried Feibiger His father was a local physician and his mother, an author. He was named after his uncle, who was a clergyman and a poet. His one-day elder brother Jorgen N. I. Feibiger was his twin, who became a well-known civil engineer. His father died of internal bleeding when he was three years of age, after which the family moved to Copenhagen where his mother earned their living by writing. His mother established there the first cooking school, the Copenhagen Cooking School. His namesake uncle supported him for his education. In 1883, at age 16, he passed his matriculation and was enrolled at the University of Copenhagen to study zoology and botany. He self-supported by teaching and working at the laboratories. He graduated in 1883. He continued for a medicine course and earned his medical degree in 1890. For a few months he worked as physicians at different hospitals, and also continued to study under Robert Koch and Emil Adolf von Bering in Berlin. Between 1891 and 1894, he was assistant to C.J. Salomonson at the Department of Bacteriology of Copenhagen University. From 1894 he joined the Royal Danish Army Medical Corps, where he served till 1897. It was during his army service that he completed his doctoral thesis research into the bacteriology of diphtheria. The University of Copenhagen awarded him a doctorate degree in 1895. He continued the diphtheria research at Blegdams Hospitalet in Copenhagen, working as a junior physician. In 1897, he was appointed preceptor at the Institute of Pathological Anatomy of University of Copenhagen. He was promoted to full professor and eventually its director in 1900. He also served as principal of the Laboratory of Clinical Bacteriology of the Army from 1890 to 1905, and director of the Central Laboratory of the Army and consultant physician to the Army Medical Service in 1905. Feibiger died on 30 January 1928 of cardiac arrest in Copenhagen. Topic. Contributions Topic. Diphtheria research Fibiger's doctoral research was on diphtheria. He developed more efficient method of growing bacteria in a laboratory setting. 
He discovered that there were two different forms strains of the diphtheria bacillus Coronibacterium diphtheriae that produce two different symptoms, now called nasopharyngeal and cutaneous diphtheria. He also produced a blood serum against the disease. He was known for his methodological system of research. One of his experiments from 1898 in which he tested the blood serum for diphtheria is regarded by some as the first controlled clinical trial. While working as a junior physician in Blegdams Hospitalate, he tested his diphtheria serum among hundreds 484 patients. As would be in modern clinical trial, he separated serum treated and untreated patients, and found that more of untreated patients died than the treated ones. According to an article in the British Medical Journal in 1998, Fibiger's experiment in 1898 was the first clinical trial in which random allocation was used and emphasized as a pivotal methodological principle. This pioneering improvement in methodology, combined with a large number of patients and rigorous planning, conduct, and reporting, makes the trial a milestone in the history of clinical trials. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Cancer and parasitology research. While studying tuberculosis in lab rats, Feibiger found tumors in some wild rats collected from Dorpat officially Tartu, now in Estonia in 1907. Rats having stomach tumor papilloma also had nematodes in their eggs. He found that some tumors were metastatic cancerous. He hypothesized that the nematodes caused the stomach cancer. After years of investigation, he experimentally demonstrated in 1913 that the nematode could induce stomach cancer. He published his discovery in a series of three papers, and also presented them at the Académie Royale des Sciences et des Lettres de Danemark Royal Danish Academy of Sciences and Letters, and Troisième Conference Internationale pour l'étude du cancer Third International Conference for Researches in Cancer at Brussels the same year. He knew that the nematode was a new species, and provisionally named it Spiratera carcinome in 1914. With Hallmar Ditlevsen, of the Zoological Museum of the University of Copenhagen, he described it as Spiratera gongilonema neoplastica in 1914. Ditlevsen revised the description in 1918, and gave the final valid name gongilonema neoplasticum. But Feibiger never used the formal scientific name, and persistently used Spiratera carcinoma. Feibiger's experiment was the first to show that Helminth parasites can cause cancer, and that cancer tumor can be experimentally induced. His discovery was supported by the experiment of two Japanese scientists Katsusaburo Yamagiwa and Koichi Ichikawa in 1918. Yamagiwa and Ichikawa demonstrated the induction of cancer carcinoma in rabbits. They showed that it was relatively easy to produce cancer was by painting coal tar on the inner surface of the ear. A number of independent experiments subsequently confirmed the cancer-inducing effect of coal tar in mice. With such supporting evidence, Fibiger's work was regarded a milestone in cancer study. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Personal life. Fibiger was married to Matilda Fibiger (1863–1954). Matilda was his cousin who came to help her mother's business while he was studying medicine. They got married on the 4th of August 1894. Feibiger had been suffering from colon cancer, and a month after he received his Nobel Prize, he died of heart attack on 30 January 1928 due to his worsening cancer. He was survived by his wife and two children. <laughs> <laughs> Nobel Prize controversy <laughs> <laughs> Nomination and selection Feibiger was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine 18 times from 1920. In 1926, he received two nominations along with Katsusaburo Yamagiwa. Folk Henschen and Hilding Bergstrand were appointed by the Nobel Committee as assessors. They disagreed on each other's conclusion. Henschen was in favor of the nomination and concluded that, "...the experimental carcinoma is worthy of the Nobel Prize." It should therefore be just if the prize would be divided between Johannes Feibiger, the discoverer of the experimental Spiratera carcinoma, and Katsusaburo Yamagiwa, the discoverer of the experimental tar carcinoma. But Bergstrand opposed to it, concluding that, an experimental confirmation of a previously known fact. 
referring to the prevalence of cancer among chimney sweeps and factory workers, an already established medical fact at the time can, in this case, not be considered that one cannot, at this point, find much support for the possibility that the work of Feibiger and Yamagiwa will have great importance in the solving of the riddle of cancer. Under such circumstances I do not consider these discoveries worthy of the Nobel Prize." The Nobel Committee could not make the final decision and decided not to give the prize for 1926. In the next year, Feibiger received seven nominations, and Yamagiwa was then excluded. Instead there were two other nominees, Otto Heinrich Warburg and Julius Wagner Jarig. In addition to Henschen and Bergstrand, Ina Hammerson was appointed as the third assessor. On Feibiger, Bergstrand was of the same opinion, Hammerson was in favor. Hence the three nominees were recommended for the award. The Nobel Committee decided to give the 1926 prize jointly to Feibiger and Warburg, and the 1927 prize to Wagner Jarig. However, the authority at the Karolinska Institute disagreed with the recommendation for Warburg for undisclosed reasons, and Feibiger became the sole winner. Warburg was eventually awarded the prize in 1931. Topic. Posthumous criticism and disproof Fibiger's discovery was unchallenged during his lifetime. The only serious criticism was by F. D. Bullock and G. L. Rodenberg. In 1918, they argued that the cancerous tumors produced in Fibiger's experiments were similar to non-cancerous tumors. Such tumors easily developed in epithelial cells. Fibiger defended that these tumors are true carcinomata cannot, thus, be doubted, and the fact that they may occur in younger animals does not diminish our right to range them among the true malignant neoplasms." It was only after Fibiger's death that the importance of vitamin A in cancer development was fully appreciated. Fibiger had used rats which were fed vitamin A less diet. It was found that vitamin A deficiency alone can cause tumors and cancers. The parasites had merely caused the tissue irritation chronic inflammation that drove the damaged cells into cancer, any tissue irritation could have induced the tumors. The major challenge came from Richard Douglas Passy, with his colleagues A. Lees, and J. C. Knox. They reported a new finding in 1935 that S. carcinoma do not cause cancer in rats. They concluded that Feibiger probably had mistaken metaplasia a non-cancerous tumor with malignant neoplasia true cancer. In 1937, W. Kramer experimentally showed that Fibiger's tumor were not cancerous. The final disproof was shown by Claude R. Hitchcock and E. T. Bell. In 1952, they repeated Fibiger's experiments using advanced microscopy and histology, and conclusively demonstrated that the tumors due to G. neoplasticum in rats were non-cancerous tumors and the tumors were primarily due to vitamin A deficiency, it is also claimed that exclusion of Yamagiwa was another mistake. Yamagiwa's work has become the primary basis for induction of tumors in cancer research. Because of this, some consider Fibiger's Nobel Prize to be undeserved particularly because Yamagiwa did not receive the prize. Encyclopedia Britannica's Guide to Nobel Prizes in Cancer Research mentions Yamagiwa's work as a milestone without mentioning Feibiger. Although G. neoplasticum is non carcinogenic, other Helminth parasites such as Schistosoma hematobium, Opisthorchus vivarini, and Clonorchus sinensis are now established to cause cancer in humans. References Further reading Nobel Lectures, Physiology or Medicine 1922 to 1941, Elsevier Publishing Company, Amsterdam, 1965. Maudlin, I. M., Kidd, M., Hinoe, T. 2001. Of Feibiger and Fables: A Cautionary Tale of Cockroaches and Helicobacter pylori. J. Klin. Gastroenterol, published September 2001. 33 3, 177 to 9. Doi 10.1097/0000048362001900000001. PMID 11500602. Raju, T. N. 1998. The Nobel Chronicles. 1926. Johannes Andreas Grib Feibiger, 1867-1928. The Lancet, published the 14th of November 1998.
352 9140 1635 doi 10.1016 so 1406736980067 pmid 9843145 stoli pd lasky t 1992 Johannes Feibiger and his Nobel Prize for the Hypothesis that a Worm Causes Stomach Cancer. Ann, intern. Med. Published 1 May 1992. 116 9, 765-9. doi 10.7326-0003-481911169765. PMID 1558350. Topic. External links Nobel Prize Biography Biography from Humamedit Biography from your Dictionary